So today in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, backfist. Now, the backfist is actually a technique that separates between the intermediate and the beginners. And I'm actually not saying that to uh, in a negative uh, tone. I'm just stating the fact that this is actually one of the techniques that separates the intermediate from the beginners, mainly because of the uh, training time that's been invested in. For the beginners, you can actually teach them how to do the back fist. They'll either try to do two things. One, they'll either do the uh, spinning motion, which is okay because it's actually one of the variations of it. The other is they're actually going to try to hit and then just using the back of the hand, which is virtually correct, but if you actually teach the intermediate, one of the ways that they're going to do a back fist is this motion right here. See? Like so. Because uh, usually, when you think about the back fist, you're going to hit, oh, okay, so it's a fist, so I need to actually hit it with my first two knuckles on my fist, on my right, on my hand. But if I'm going to think of hitting with the back fist, so maybe hitting the back of the hand? So, it's kind of confusing. Because fist, for one, you actually punch straight, right? It doesn't matter what kind of angle it is, if it's an uppercut or a hook or literally in one direction like a jab, it's still a straight punch when you think about it because you're aiming with your first two knuckles. So I go closer right here, these two right here. Not with these two, these two. You get less injuries when you actually punch with your big two knuckles because it, it's straight with your forearm as opposed to punching with these two small knuckles right here, your pinky and your ring finger <clears throat> because it's really not aligned with your forearm. Therefore, you punch with your first two big knuckles which is your index and your middle, like so. Now, to do the back fist, I'm going to focus on the frontal back fist. Frontal meaning you're in a fighting stance like this. And then you're going to actually hit in this kind of motion. So as I do it right here, like so. And you're hitting again with your two huge knuckles, your middle finger and your index finger. But instead of actually punching on this side, you're punching on this side right here. So as I demonstrate, Like so, okay? So if I pull my fist outside here, this is the motion and this is actually your main hitting point. Like so. For impact, here's a demonstration. Okay? Naturally, once you actually hit your target, it would bounce, meaning your fist because you actually don't want to fully absorb all of the shock from hitting your target or else you're actually going to have an injury with your elbow like a tennis elbow or sometimes your shoulder so you're bringing that like so plus the main advantage of doing that is you're actually back to your fighting stance meaning that you can actually immediately back away when they try to counter you or they try to follow up after you do an attack, whether it's a hit or a miss. You can step back or move at a certain angle so that you will not be hit. Now, for doing the back fist, it's a lot different than doing normal jab. So when you do a jab, like so, right? The proper jab is to actually just have your elbow planted on your side, on your rib rest it there, and then try to extend your fist in a straight line without flaring your elbow. So you're not doing that. You're doing this, right? Like so. Aiming with the front of your two huge knuckles. Whereas the back fist, even though they're in a very similar position, it actually goes from the opposite side. Meaning, 
this uh, rather than going straight with my jab, I have my hand, in this case my left hand, do a 90 degree angle to my right side and then swing to the opposite direction to my left. Okay? So if I want to do a back fist, like so. I need to actually lower my left hand first to the right side because I'm punching with my left in order for me to swing to my left side. Okay? Instead of actually going straight, you do that. You can do it in two ways. One, you can do it with your arms, like so. Two, if you want to add more power, you actually use your hips. Okay? So the main difference is this is your arm, and this is with your hips. See? It actually gives much more torque, and it uh, obviously gives much more power. That's with your hips. This is with your arm. That's a thud. Now, if you're going to do a back fist and you actually just want to use it as a distraction, I would suggest that you just use it like a jab. Maybe you're actually just using the arm for it. See? Also, once you hit the target, you actually have your fist loose at first, so it's not actually really clenched or white knuckle, but you actually tighten your fist or close your fist, timing it uh, once you hit the target. Okay? You actually have, you actually don't have your fist closed the entire time before you hit the target that you're aiming at. You have to have your fist loose, and then once you're about to hit the target, that's the time you're actually going to uh, close your fist in order to fully absorb the impact. Also, it actually helps your uh, uh, lessen injury on your muscle since it's relaxed whenever you're doing uh, quick stuff like uh, doing a jab or flicking, right? You don't want to do that. It's really painful the shoulder and the elbow and the wrist your joints specifically. <clears throat> Rather, you would want to be relaxed when you're doing a back fist, and then close your fist on the last minute once you're about to hit the target. Main difference again with white knuckling your fist. Doing it straight and painful. Whereas relaxing, and then closing your fist on the last minute, much better for you. Like so. So again, on doing the back fist, rather than doing it here and then just <laughs> turning your fist like that, you need to, this is a frontal back fist by the way, you need to have your hand on the opposite side. So since I'm actually punching with my left, I have my left arm at a 90 degree angle to my right, so that I'll swing it to my left. Okay, preferably since you can see my head, slightly past the target, like so. Have your entire arm loose, not the white knuckle, so loose, and once you're about to hit the target, last minute or last second, close your fist. Okay, not this. but this. Like so. Now, why should you learn the back fist? For one, it has a great surprise factor. A lot of people, when you're uh, sparring with them, or if there's an assailant coming towards you and you're trying to defend yourself, and you chose to actually use your fists to defend yourself, a lot of times they get caught off guard once you're doing the back fist because most of the time 
they are actually prepared of anyone really of doing a version of a jab, a cross, or a combination thereof, right? So just that. Sometimes haymakers or hooks, anything that's uh, with the same direction of the set arm. So if I use my right arm, for example, I'm just going to go for the direction where my right arm is going, right? Doesn't matter if I do hooks or straights or even a direction going down like that. If I use my left arm, same thing. Like so. I'm exaggerating the angle so that you can actually see. Whereas with the back fist, they're not prepared to see you using the arm going to the opposite direction. Say for example, I'm using my right. Like so, right? See, that's really unorthodox and not to mention surprising because you actually didn't think about me doing a punch with my right hand going to my right. See what I'm saying? So if I punch again, this time with my left. Like so. Right there. I did a shoulder shrug to actually feint my opponent that I'm about to do a hook because that's actually a very good motion to sell. You see the shoulder first and then you do a hook, right? After lift, see my hand as I demonstrated earlier? It's already at a certain angle where it's straight to my right side, right? Just like with the 90 degree angle that I demonstrated earlier. And then I back this. So instead of doing a hook, because your opponent is expecting you to do a hook, from your left to your right side, like so. See? Second reason why you should use a back fist. It's actually sometimes the closest um, technique that you could do, especially when you're in a uh, close quarters combat uh, situation. Say, for example, I'm this close with my opponent, middle and same, right? Sometimes the hook will not get me out of the situation. Sometimes an uppercut would actually not get me out of the situation. Sometimes I try to push, but if I actually go pull away, I'm only bracing with my one hand, while my other hand tries to punch, I need all of the force in order for me to punch straight. But even if I do, unless I actually take a step back, I don't have that enough force to push them away. So in this case, even if I'm this close, all I need is a small swivel. Once I dip to either side, Notice where my hand already is. So if I actually dip on to my right, my left hand is already in position for me to do a back fist. So again, in this position, I can do I can do a hook, sure, but it's not actually as effective because I'm too close. I can do a hook on the face, but then again, I actually need a wide angle for me to be able to produce force. If I'm going to do a straight punch, I need to do a step back in order for me to have more space, therefore leading me to using more force to punch. But if I don't have any of those options, all I just need is to take a dip, like so, right? I just turn my body slightly, preferably 45 degrees, take a dip, like so, so my Knees are bent, as you can see, and then my arm is already in position for me to reach the assailant's target. Uh, in this case, preferably the face, like so, right? Again, using the relaxed arm, you actually don't want to knuckle your fist. Once you do, you're not going to do that. That's kind of slow. At the same time, it hurts your joints, as I already mentioned. Take a dip. 
Arm is already in a position, relaxed. You swing your arm and then hit on the target last minute with your fist closed. So you're not white knuckling it, you're like so. Okay, you're not you're like that. This stance. Say you're in a CQC situation, really this close, right? You can't do hooks, although you can take a dip, but it still needs those wide angles. You can do uppercuts. I want to go straight, <clears throat> or use a straight rather. I need to take a step back and use a straight, but all those options are taken away. I take a dip, facing 45 degrees, like here. My arm is already prepared, in a position, relaxed. I swing, close my fist, last second, and then bring it back. Like so. That's how fast it is. They don't expect the direction where your right hand is coming from. Since it's your right hand, they're expecting it to come from your right, but no. And then it's quick because your arm is relaxed, and then you close your fist on the last second, making it make it a lot easier for you to uh, bounce back and be prepared for another attack. Again, I'm just going to go this direction for demonstration purposes. You can do both directions, okay? Like so. So there's the back fist and hopefully, hopefully you'll be adding this arsenal in your training tools. It's really unconventional, but once you actually train enough times with it, you'll be able to actually flow once you uh, try to incorporate it in your training, especially when you're doing free flow. Because if there's one thing that you want to do in training, especially when you actually want to integrate it in your self-defense, it's to actually not be predictable. You want to be as unpredictable as possible so that your opponent will not have that advantage of reading you and at the same time you have that surprise factor in order for them to be caught off guard. Therefore, you're taking full advantage of the situation. So you don't want to just do like so. You want to add the back fist now, right? Normally, that'll be a dip, either uppercut or a right hook, but now you can just add a back fist right there. You can add a back fist after a jab. Like so. Okay. Hopefully, this video has helped you and opened your eyes when it comes to adding the back fist. Because a back fist, whatever uh, kind of situation you're in, actually helps you a lot. Especially when it comes to defending yourself and uh, it's a price spot.